This is not the NFL. This is the NFL. Yes, it's time for the NFL. Today, let's explore how one regular season injury to a Steelers running back wildly changed the 2014 playoffs and the ensuing offseason. We now know Le'Veon Bell's sophomore season and ultimately the Steelers' season met their demise when the knee of the Pittsburgh star met the helmet of Cincy Bengals safety Reggie Nelson. Was it an intentional hit? Retribution delivered by the football gods nine years after Carson Palmer got chemoed? Who knows? But far be it for the Steelers fans to cry foul. What we do know is Pittsburgh fell at home the following week in their wild card matchup against the arch rival Ravens, who went on to give the eventual Super Bowl winning Patriots all they could handle in the divisional round. But what if Bell hadn't gotten dinged? Well, sorry, Ravens, the Bell tolls for thee. Pittsburgh was on a roll in December, and if number 26 had been available, the Steelers would have been cooking in January, starting by grilling up the birds, then heading to Denver to fry Peyton's goose. Hey, if the indie band and its frontman Andrew Luck could do it, Big Ben's supergroup would have too. Speaking of the Colts, the Steelers' win against Baltimore means Luck and company play their divisional round game in Foxborough, where they still get dumped by Brady and the Pats, who are themselves knocked out the following week when the Steelers, led by Levy and Bell's three touchdowns, leave Foxborough in the dust and drive off to the desert for Super Bowl 49. None of what we've changed on the AFC side affects the defending champion Seahawks, who still win, or more accurately benefit from the Packers giving away, the NFC title game to advance to Glendale. There they get a Super Bowl rematch with the Steelers nine years after a Detroit native named Bettis and 52 others defeated Seattle in Super Bowl 40. This time around, the Seahawks grab the Lombardi when Licardo Lockett grabs a last-minute goal line touchdown pass. Seattle's win is also immeasurably aided by six very questionable calls by the officials, but far be it for Steelers fans to cry foul. With a second straight visit to the top of the football mountain, the dynastic Seahawks aren't inclined to try and fix what ain't broke, so center Max Unger isn't shipped to NOLA for a pass-catching upgrade named Jimmy Graham, who instead makes the jump, or what do I know, maybe swims, across the gulf to Miami, back to where he matriculated at the U. By the by, did you know he played college basketball? Yeah. So did Antonio Gates and Julius Thomas and Tony Gonzalez. Also, Ryan Fitzpatrick went to Harvard. Tom Brady was a sixth round draft pick too. Speaking of Brady, his team breaks the bank to keep Darrell Rivas, who reckons his quest for that first ring is more likely to be realized in Foxborough than Newark, New Jersey. The Seahawks spend their summer preparing for the NFL's first ever Super Bowl III, Pete, which coincidentally kicks off in Seattle against the Green Bay Packers, just like in 2014. Who wouldn't like that? Well, besides the Packers, I mean. Hey, you're welcome. I live to serve here in the NFL. This is the NFL.